If you are genuinely passionate about the Castlevania franchise, the exploits of Dracula's son undoubtedly holds a special place in your heart. Alucard, being the only one of his kind, is a unique blend of human and vampire known as a damn fear, who emerges as this strikingly handsome linchpin in the age-old conflict between vampires and humans. The 2017 Netflix release of the Castlevania animated series made quite the waves with its enthralling narrative and exceptional animation, captivating audiences. With its take on the long, enduring struggle between good and evil within this iconic universe. So of course the franchise came out with another exciting spin-off, Castlevania Nocturne. While this series had no recurring characters from the OG Netflix anime, given that it is set approximately 300 years after Trevor Belmont's reign, our favorite Dampier made quite a spectacular entry at the season finale, leaving us with a banging cliffhanger. Now, across its four seasons, the original Castlevania series, inspired by the Castlevania 3 Dracula's Curse video game, reached a dazzling crescendo as some major characters met their demise while others found themselves in entirely new and unpredictable situations. The fourth season became a culmination of intense storytelling and breathtaking animation, while delivering a magnificent finale that reverberated with shock and offered satisfying resolutions for all its cherished characters. Even if the conclusion was gratifying, it left lingering questions within us fans and really compelled us to rack our brains on exactly what happened to Alucard between the time period after the OG Netflix anime ended and Nocturne began. I mean, Alucard received somewhat of a happy ending, right? So what exactly did he do in the past three centuries? Well, in this video, we will draw the parallels between Alucard's character from the gaming lore to the animated series to drive up some potential theory on what exactly was our damn fear up to in this time which has been completely unaccounted for. So without wasting another second, let's get right into it. But before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. Alucard's Fade in Castlevania Animated Series Before we get into the main concept of this video, let's do a quick recap of Alucard within the Castlevania series. We already know that he was the son of the infamous Vlad Dracula and the compassionate healer Lisa Tepesh. The tragic turning point in Alucard's life unfolded in 1475 when his mother Lisa fell victim to accusations of witchcraft by the local church, leading to her unjust condemnation to be burned at the stake. This harrowing event became the catalyst for the deepening rift between father and son. As Dracula's reign of terror progressed, Trevor and Sypha came forward and formed a power trio with Alucard, which would ultimately defeat Dracula. In the aftermath of Dracula's demise, Alucard opted to remain behind, steadfastly guarding the fortress of Dracula's castle and the esteemed Belmont Keep. After Trevor and Sypho left for their own adventures, Alucard's grief and loneliness finally got to him. Dude almost went berserk in isolation until he was unexpectedly approached by two young vampire hunters, Sumi and Taka, who wanted to learn the art of vampire hunting from the very best. Eventually, Alucard bonded with them and began to share his extensive knowledge of vampire hunting. Yet, Sumi and Taka grew suspicious and thought Alucard was hiding something from them. The situation took a tragic turn when both Sumi and Taka turned on Alucard and tried to kill him that swiftly spiraled into a malevolent trap. Even though Alucard begged them to stop, they did not listen, so he had no choice but to summon his magical sword and use it to slit their throats open. Haunted by the traumatic betrayal he had endured, Alucard became paranoid as he sought solace in an even more reclusive and solitary lifestyle. He became a drunkard and grimly displayed Sumi and Taka's lifeless remains on pikes, much like the macabre deterrent reminiscent of his father, Dracula. His life finally turned around when a nearby village sent a messenger imploring him to save Dynasty from a horde of monstrous creatures. Then Alucard went down to Dynasty to do what he does best, killing monstrous beasts. His valor in battle caught the attention of Greta, the village leader who extended her gratitude to Alucard while she did not pass judgment on him for being a half-vampire. She emphasized the dire need to protect the villagers from the relentless night creatures' attacks. Soon, Alucard's heightened senses detected a sinister pattern where these night creature attacks were actually being orchestrated as raids to satiate the vampire's thirst for blood. He then decides to evacuate every villager and relocate them to the sanctuary of Dracula's castle. Later that night, they are again attacked by the cult of Dracula hellbent on resurrecting the dark vampire lord in the body of an undead golem. While fighting the relentless horde of night creatures and vampire armies alongside Greta, Alucard is soon joined by Trevor and Sypha. Together, the trio fight 
red song to monsters and we see Alucard shapeshift into a magnificent white wolf. Their combined efforts led to a victorious showdown against the cult of Dracula. Dragon, the last remaining adversary, met his end at the hands of Alucard. However, the culmination of their battle unleashed an unforeseen twist, as Death revealed himself as the master manipulator of all events, using Saint Germain to initiate a sequence that closed the red magic elemental portal, summoning the souls of both Dracula and Lisa into the Rebus. Death wanted to use the Rebus to resurrect a deranged Dracula who would erase humanity from Earth, allowing the malevolent entity to become the most powerful being on the planet. So Alucard and his companions found themselves embroiled in a final battle against death, with Trevor leading the charge. After this climatic confrontation, Alucard returned to Greta and engaged in discussions about the future regarding the permanent location of the villagers. Greta, noting Alucard's growing faith in humanity, recognized his vital role in her village and proposed to build a community around the castle. Alucard received his happy ending as his relationship with Greta leaned towards something more romantic, while Sypha and Trevor also joined him to live together in Village Belmont. Alucard's fate in Castlevania Nocturne In the climatic conclusion of Castlevania Nocturne, the vampire hunters find themselves teetering on the edge of defeat when the elaborate plan pulled by Richter, Annette, Terra, and Maria to dismantle the abbot's forge master machine unravels catastrophically. Terra makes the ultimate sacrifice, offering herself to Urzabet Bathory in a desperate attempt to save Maria from the clutches of the vampire queen's nefarious schemes. With their strategy in ruins, the remaining heroes face a grim fate relentlessly pursued by the menacing lieutenant of the vampire messiah, Drolta Zuentis, and her legion of monstrous creatures seemingly trapped with no avenue of escape. Just as Drolta prepares to deliver a fatal blow to Richter, an unexpected twist unfolds as a sword swiftly impales Drolta's heart, and to everyone's surprise, the wielder is revealed to be none other than the son of Dracula himself. James Callis reprises his role as Alucard, making a stunning and unexpected cameo in the closing moments of the series. This unforeseen entrance by Alucard introduces an intriguing narrative turn, hinting at his potentially significant role in the forthcoming season, leaving fans eagerly anticipating the continuation of the story. <laughs> Alucard's fate in the Castlevania gaming lore now we first saw the Dampier in Castlevania 3 Dracula's Curse, which was the game to actually inspire the initial seasons of the OG Netflix anime. Similar to the show, Alucard is woken up by Trevor and Sypha, and together they join forces to vanquish Dracula, but unlike his anime counterpart, Alucard succumbs to the guilt of patricide, and to further alleviate his inner torment, he chose to go back into his deep slumber, willingly suppressing his formidable powers. It was not until 300 years later that Alucard made his significant comeback in Castlevania, Symphony of the Night game, when there was no Belmont left to safeguard humanity from the reign of monsters. After reluctantly awakening from his slumber, Alucard infiltrated Castlevania to investigate the unsettling situation and uncovered the distressing truth that Richter Belmont had fallen victim to evil forces manipulating the castle. Teaming up with Richter's cousin Maria Renard, they unraveled the dark mystery where a malevolent priest named Shaft had manipulated Richter and aimed to use him in order to resurrect Dracula. After freeing Richter from Shaft's control, Alucard ventured into the nightmarish, inverted version of Castlevania, crawling with indomitable adversaries, ultimately confronting Shaft. Although Alucard triumphed over Shaft, the latter's sinister plan had already come to fruition, and Dracula was now back in the scene. He engaged in a poignant final battle with his father, and in a fleeting moment of humanity, Dracula was moved by Alucard's revelation of Lisa's last words, desiring peace for humanity and professing eternal love, which allowed Alucard to seize the opportunity to put his father back to rest. After the fiasco, when Alucard contemplated returning to his own rest, Maria, who had developed deep feelings for him, endeavored to persuade him otherwise. Although Symphony of the Night somewhat aligns with Nocturne's season finale cliffhanger, Dracula's ending within the game mirrors with his demise in the OG Netflix series. One year after his triumph over his father, in the Castlevania Nocturne of Recollection gaming lore, Alucard faced another threat from an incubus named Magnus, who relentlessly attempted to sway Alucard towards evil, but the Damphir resolutely resisted these temptations. Instead, he aligned himself with Maria, Richter, Cyril, and Alexis, uniting their forces against the malevolent Magnus. During their confrontation, Magnus shockingly unveiled Alucard's dark history of consuming human blood, which included the transformation of his loyal servant, Lyudmil, into a vampire. 
When Maria confronted him with these accusations, Alucard did not refute the allegations, and this revelation ultimately led to a harrowing showdown between Lyudmil and Alucard, orchestrated by Magnus. Over the centuries, Alucard rose time and again throughout the franchise to battle evil, be it in the Castlevania Area of Sorrow game disguising himself as Genya Arikado in order to guide Soma Cruz and prevent him from embracing his destiny as the Dark Vessel for Dracula, or literally in any other game rising as the glimmer of hope in the lonely world ridden with looming darkness. What do we think happened to Alucard between the time period of the Netflix Castlevania series and, and his rise in Castlevania Nocturne? Now, of course, either of the shows have given any solid hint on this particular topic, given that the Castlevania series ended with Alucard finally finding some form of happiness with Greta's companionship. Unlike his gaming counterpart, Alucard did not succumb to his loneliness and instead built a community of well-knit people around his father's castle alongside Trevor and Sypha. Now, throughout the gaming lore, be it in the main canon or otherwise, Alucard was never really fully committed to anyone unless you consider Greta from the series and Maria from the gaming lore. But still, it does not hint towards him having a family or even a solid relationship given that both these relationships had hinted towards something romantic but was never seen blooming into something better on screen. But there has always been one recurring theme throughout the gaming lore and it is Alucard rising time and again just to thwart his father's nefarious schemes. So it does make sense that this guy wakes up to kill his father and then goes back into his depression naps, which lasts for centuries until he is needed again. I mean, we barely see him having life at all, unless it includes fighting Dracula and his nightmarish hordes, or at least some form of evil. Of course, the Castlevania animated series had us fans in a chokehold with one last twist before the series ended. The resurrection of the Dark Lord and his wife opened up endless possibilities, but well, the spin-off did not exactly pick up after that. So, if we take the recurring gaming theme into consideration, it is quite possible that something again triggered Dracula's descent back to darkness, prompting Alucard to again team up with Trevor and Sypha to take down his father once and for all. We already know how lonely Alucard was as a character in the show, so if killing his father once turned him into that bitter, hopeless, lonely guy, it is only justified to assume that committing Atrocide again finally spiraled him into full-blown depression, leading him to go back into his self-induced slumber for the next 300 years. Until, of course, the Richter Belmont era began in Castlevania Nocturne, compelling his obvious return to the series when the Belmont could not contain the terror caused by Urzabed Bathory. Alucard's unexpected appearance with his spin-off series perfectly aligns with the show's ambition to adapt elements not only from Rondo of Blood but also from various other Konami games. Characters like Bathory and Zawentis, for instance, originated from the 1994 Sega Genesis game Castlevania Bloodlines, set a century after Richter's adventure. The show also aims to incorporate elements from the acclaimed 1997 PlayStation game Symphony of the Night, often considered as one of the series' finest entries. This inclusion of Alucard bridges the narrative gaps between the animated series Nocturne, Rondo of Blood, and Symphony of the Night. In this context, it is vital to consider the potential dark turn Richter's story arc from Symphony of the Night could take in Season 2 wherein he replaces Dracula as the main antagonist. Should Nocturne Season 2 choose to adapt Richter's storyline from Symphony, it could mean tumultuous times ahead for the young Belmont, moreover the enigmatic vampire queen, Bathory, might manipulate Richter into joining her cause, further complicating matters and leaving Alucard, Annette, and Maria to work together. To save Richter from her clutches, all of these developments could ultimately lead to the return of the Dark Lord himself, Dracula. A significant event in Castlevania lore said to occur once every century, a milestone that has now arrived after 300 years, setting the stage for a potentially epic showdown in Season 2. Anyways, it should be noted that none of these theories per se are set in stone. They're simply our take on what could have been a scenario if the studios had decided to follow a continuity along Castlevania's timeline, or what might happen to the upcoming Nocturne Season 2 if the gaming lore is somewhat followed. Marvel's Burning by now, we can all wholeheartedly agree that Alucard is a character shrouded in complexity and rich history embodying the duality of his nature, both as a vampire and a human. Across various iterations, Alucard's character remains a beacon of resilience and growth. Even if he is portrayed as an emo guy from time to time, it definitely does not put a strain on his ability to forge meaningful relationships. From his iconic role in Symphony of the Night to his appearances in later games and adaptations, Alucard's story is a compelling exploration of identity, power, and the enduring struggle between light and darkness. 
Now we all simply wait for Nocturne's next season which might bring some form of clarity between the time gap of both the Netflix shows and most importantly shed light on Alucard's whereabouts during these unaccounted centuries. How about you guys? What are your theories regarding this character? Let us know in the comment box below.